Amplified Unit! There is only one thing better than an amped up podcast with BC, and that is two amped up podcasts with BC Amplified in the same day. And that's exactly what you're getting on this Thursday, May the 11th, 2023. Double the amplification. Because just earlier, BC threw out the first, we'll call it Volume 1, of the Amped Up Double Decker, in which we had a pack show over an hour long. Catch that after this podcast. You ain't going to want to miss it. We talked all about WWE talent being upset with the WWE management, especially what production was told to do. Piping in crowd noise, boos, cheers that are not authentic. That is not what is actually being generated by the live crowd. And it's no longer the fans or just the fans that are upset with that piped in noise. The talent is finally voicing out their frustration, including one top name in that company. You may or may not be shocked about who that name is. That's standing up for everybody in that locker room. And since they spoke out, we're hearing that more voices in that locker room have spoken out against piped in crowd noise. Will this mean the end of it finally? Will the talent's voices be heard? And we can finally do away with the fake boos and the piped in cheers and the fake crowd responses? Remains to be seen. Does WWE care what the what the roster, what the talent thinks? It's clear they don't care what the fans think. But we talk all about that in the podcast put up just a few hours ago. In that same podcast, we talked about Tony Khan and AEW. Are they being screwed by this new TV rights deal by Warner Discovery? Right, It just doesn't seem like Tony Khan is super excited about this deal. It doesn't seem like Warner Discovery is too pumped up about the deal, to be honest, even though the new details we're getting seems to be heavily in favor of Warner Discovery. But it just doesn't seem like everybody is gleaming to, 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 to get this information out. Like, for instance, when Fox acquired the rights to SmackDown over on the WWE side of things, man, WWE was so pumped for that billion dollars. They're getting a billion dollars for one show, SmackDown. A billion dollars for one show over the course of uh, just uh, four years max, I believe. And then on top of that, you had Fox, who was just so happy with the deal because they knew how much advertising revenue was going to come from this over the next several years. They were going to most likely recoup all that and then some. And so even before the big announcement, a little bit here, details there, a little bit of details over there, details up there, details down there. They started to leak out because everybody was so excited uh, to get the information out. So by the time the deal was actually announced, we pretty much knew all the details. Here, it's not that way. You're not getting a lot of information. Everybody seems to just be like, yeah, a new deal was was uh, made, official. Um, the, the network is going to just announce everything uh, on the upfronts. And Tony's going to announce it next week when he announces the new collision show. It doesn't seem like there was the excitement. Anyway, we talked all about that in the podcast earlier. Now, since that podcast went up about three or four hours ago, as of this recording, new details have emerged. There's talk about a billion-dollar deal that Tony Khan uh, has gotten. Now, that has since been debunked. Not saying that he didn't get a billion, but the, re the initial report has been debunked. So, if he did or didn't get a billion dollars by Warner Discovery, we'll find out. But the initial report uh, ended up holding no validity. But what does hold weight is how I should put it, because again, we cannot confirm whether it's a billion dollars or a little less or far less. But what does hold weight, what is more than valid, because we are hearing it from multiple reputable sources is that more than likely this deal from Warner Discovery that they have offered to AEW, and it looks like Tony Khan has absolutely accepted, is an all-inclusive slash exclusive rights deal for all of AEW programming. Everything from the reality shows to the actual 
combat show of dynamite and collision and a rampage and whatever else they produce in the future, if they do, and and the pay-per-views for what will become part of their streaming package. So whether it's a billion or, or they better hope it's at least a billion. But again, the exact amount is is unconfirmed. Whoa! The details that we are getting, we gotta talk about it. Because did Tony Khan just get conned? Again, I repeat, WWE, and I understand they've been around decades longer, but just to give you a, a taste of how this works, Fox gave them a billion dollars plus. The final number was over a billion for the four years of SmackDown. That's one show. Could you imagine giving your entire company's product up as far as programming, giving it all up into an all-inclusive slash exclusive for Warner Discovery, an all-inclusive package? This young into your company's history, damn, that tells you that he didn't have a lot. If this remains to be true or comes out to be more true than, than not, that tells you how many people were not willing to do business with AEW uh, because of the sliding numbers. We're going to talk all about this coming up in this podcast. We're also going to talk Becky Lynch, a response in a way, to what Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez have recently said. More Liv Morgan, I should say. On who she wants to defend the tag titles against. I talked about it in the earlier podcast. Well, Becky Lynch has a little something to say about, well, the two individuals that Liv Morgan would like to compete with. We'll talk all about it. We got the AEW Dynamite rating and a whole lot more fun. We got a pack show, double the amplification, volume two for Thursday, May 11, 2023. I say we get amplified. I say we waste no time. Let's do this. And we got such a big podcast, I forgot to even mention the Steph McMahon story in the teaser, in the cold open. <laughs> I didn't even put it in the cold open with the rest of the teasers. And it's a big story, man. BC has been sitting on this for about a week now. The way it was first told to me by my people down in Florida was that she was strongly considering this option that we're going to talk about. That was the word I got. And I quote, strongly considering, it's been nearly a week now, and that has moved to she's about to put pen to paper and actually ink a deal with this company. So we have to talk about this. Stephanie McMahon returning, but not to WWE. She's going to be all elite. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Relax. She's not going all elite, guys. I know once I said she's not going to WWE, everyone's like, what? She's going to AEW? Not quite. Not quite. Wait till you hear. Uh, what is unfolding with Steph McMahon? We're going to start with that story, I assure you. First, I got to give a few thankses, man. A big thanks via the super thanks button down below, that, that button that YouTube put up, the thanks button that you guys have been utilizing big time as of late. Um, it's a way to tip the content creator, in this case, throwing BC a coffee. It's never needed, man. It's always appreciated because I find it really cool that you can even do that. <laughs> uh, but all I ever ask of you guys is it's totally free. Just smash the up down below. Help the algorithm. Smash the like. Give it a DDT, a power bomb, a sharpshooter, Canadian destroyer. But just smash that up. Totally free. The fact that you guys throw BC a coffee... Even on uh, regular straight up podcasts, it's just phenomenal, man. And I want to thank John Gray uh, for throwing BC a coffee in just the, the podcast I put up a few hours ago. And John Gray says, thanks, BC. Uh, thanks for keeping it real. I thank you, John Gray, uh, for being a part of the unit because this unit is what it is because of people like you. So I'm going to return that thanks right to you. I appreciate the coffee, dude. And a couple new channel members. We have Amy Faru. I hope I said that. I hope I did honor to that last name. I know it sounds pretty Italian, so I put the emphasis on that. Amy Faru and Jack Block 5252. You guys have just earned your gold card membership. Use those gold cards 
wisely. Um, I always love seeing my Amplified Unit members graduate to channel membership and get those gold cards, man. So, so cool. Now, on to the business. Steph McMahon. She is returning. We are hearing the tentative date is around SummerSlam. That's not the big story. The big, I mean, that's big. That is huge. Stephanie McMahon, absolutely. Uh, big name, obviously, and her returning in any capacity is massive. But the real story here, why this is uh, the first story for BC to go over in this second podcast of the day, the real story is because she's not actually coming back to WWE. Again, none of this is confirmed as of now. I'm setting you guys up for what is, is most likely about to happen. Stephanie McMahon is returning not to WWE, but to endeavor to work under Ari Emanuel, which is the CEO of Endeavor. This is wild to me. I, I, I know, I know up front you may say, well, BC, I mean, it kind of makes sense. I mean, they bought WWE, the merger, but they're 51% owners. So for all intents and purposes, they, they bought WWE with the 51% ownership. Stephanie McMahon was a top person in WWE. But still, how is that not wild to you? She... It, if you think about it, she could kind of, in a roundabout way, be the boss of Vincent Kennedy McMahon. His daughter could be his boss. And let me break that down for you. And I don't want to put words into Ari's mouth because as of recently as just yesterday on CNBC, Ari Emanuel was asked about interfering with Vince McMahon. Would he be doing that if need be? Ari's response was, Absolutely not. We're going to let Dana White do his thing with UFC. We're going to let Vince McMahon do his thing with WWE. And we, Endeavor, are going to do our thing. That tells you everything you need to know. That is such a Vince response, right? Like when Vince was asked, are you going to be involved in creative? And he goes, well, in the, in like, in the weeds? No. But am I going to be, like, around the weeds? Yeah. <laughs> What Ari is saying is, no, we're not going to interfere unless we need to. You know, they're going to do their thing and we are going to do our thing. But I truly believe he doesn't want to interfere with Dana White and Vince McMahon's business models. But he knows he's going to have to many, many times a month and week, maybe many, many times a day, Ari is going to have to do such. You're going to have to have the right people in place. You're going to have to have right-hand men slash women to be able to oversee these entities like UFC and WWE. What if Stephanie McMahon is coming on board to oversee WWE? I mean, you got to believe she's not coming on board to oversee UFC, correct? And she sure as hell isn't coming in to, to get coffee for Ari Emanuel. She's not coming in to be somebody's secretary. Uh, the stats that Stephanie McMahon boasts business-wise are top-notch. Stephanie McMahon, no matter how you feel about her, is bringing one hell of a business acumen with her wherever she goes. If she, if, it's not in concrete, I'm telling you guys what I'm hearing. And last week it was strongly, comp uh, she was strongly considering was the word that I got. That was a quote. Strongly considering um, inking a deal with Endeavor. And then here we are. It hasn't even been a full week. And I'm hearing that ink is about to be put to paper. If this ends up coming to fruition, and we're hearing around SummerSlam, that doesn't shock me, the timing. Because around SummerSlam, by then... Everything will be made public for this whole merger slash new ownership of WWE with Endeavor, right? It's good. They said it's going to take a few months into June and possibly July to even get their, their, their name out there, what they're going to go by, LLC, all that type of shit. You know, legally, it's going to take a few months. The flywheel is going to take effect probably later this month into June. So you're going to take a few months. So I'm not. I'm not shocked at all of the time frame. I'm shocked that she is bypassing WWE going right to Endeavor. We were hearing that there was friction between Stephanie and Vince, which helped her decision to finally just leave WWE um, for a while. It's been a few months. But is it friction enough to, to 
is it going behind his back or just pulling a big business decision that Vince would have pulled on her? But to take a position so highly, I mean, is the relationship between Steph and Vince that bad that she's like, all right, well, <laughs> how about how about I oversee you? Or have they reconciled any differences? And this is a power play masterfully by Vince. Get Ari to hire Stephanie. Now Vince is even more bulletproof. He's, he's got WWE, obviously, by the balls, even under Endeavor. But now he's also got his daughter in a top tier position with Endeavor. I don't, I don't know, man. It's still, it's, I ask a million questions when I, when I find out about these reports because they're so fun to me. It's so interesting. I guess that's why I have a podcast, right? I, mean, I just love the behind the scenes. I love the reports and the stories and finding out what is accurate, what, what isn't. And even when plans fall through and a story doesn't go to fruition, finding out what pieces were accurate to see how far along something truly was, what derailed it. I have so many questions. Stephanie McMahon, guys, by the time frame of SummerSlam, could be working under Ari Emanuel. Vince McMahon could be reporting to Stephanie McMahon. I can't even fathom this, bro. <laughs> massive, massive story there. I will be following it, guys. I thought there was enough validity to this to, uh, to finally talk about it with you guys. Break the ice on the topic. And now we'll just see where we go from here. Anything I get on this, because we've already... We've already broke the ice on the topic. Anything I get on this, you guys will know about it. I assure you of that. I will make sure this is one of my top priorities, the Stephanie McMahon situation. Um, moving on, guys. We'll go to another big story. Uh, this one was teased. It was such a packed show. It is such a packed show. I didn't even put the Steph story in the teaser. This one was, is Tony Khan being conned by Discovery, Warner Discovery? It's possible. A number was thrown out there. It's been debunked, but then other reputable sources said, well, it could be in the realm of a billion, but the billion dollar amount, you want to say that's huge. That's amazing. Dude, this guy who started a company five years ago, a little less, he just got a billion dollar deal. Not so fast. Not so fast. And again, we don't even know if that billion is confirmed. It's what this deal takes from Tony Khan. What is he giving up for this supposed roughly billion dollars? Don't mind that. That's my German Shepherd and my Chinese Chow Chow. I've been bringing them to the studio uh, for some training reasons. So every now and again, for podcasts to come as well and live streams, you might hear some barking in the background. Um, I have my German Shepherd, my Chinese Chow Chow, kicking ass. Um, I can see them, too. They, they're crossing by. <laughs> uh, but sometimes they get a little extra amped up. But what this entails, what is Tony Khan giving up for this, uh, whatever this price ends up being, whether it's a billion or a little less, and I wouldn't be shocked if it's a little less because, uh, I, I mean, they're unproven still. You look at their ratings and guys, sorry, not sorry. We're going to talk about the ratings for Dynamite last night, too. They actually gained 100,000 viewers, but well below what they should be getting. In fact, they're just back to their new normal. I'll talk about that in a little bit, what Dynamite pulled. But if you look at their ratings, I mean, to even offer a billion dollars, I guess it is you could say Warner Discovery is putting their neck on the line. But... What did Tony give up is my original question here. Did Tony Khan get conned, right? Did he have to sell the soul of AEW to Warner Discovery? Well, if what we're hearing ends up to be accurate, which looks like it's going to be, because when I say reputable, I mean about three separate reputable sources are now confirming that they're hearing the same thing. Listen to this. Involved in this deal... Warner Discovery will have an all-inclusive base of AEW programming, guys. All exclusive and all inclusive. <laughs> Everything. Everything that is programming 
with AEW would go to Warner Discovery. I am talking their little reality series and any other reality show or any type of show outside of the actual wrestling. That would all go to Warner Discovery. The actual wrestling shows like your Dynamite, The New Collision, A Rampage, AEW Destruction, AEW High Voltage, whatever you want to fucking add on in the future, all of it goes to Warner Discovery. Not just one show, guys. I know we're all thinking like SmackDown, uh, WWE got a billion dollars just to air SmackDown alone for four years or four or five years. No, this isn't just one show. It's every wrestling show, Dynamite, Collision, and anything going forward, all the reality shows, and guys, I'm not even done. I'm also hearing that even the pay-per-views would go to Warner Discovery and be put onto their subscription service, their streaming service. Even the pay-per-views would go to Warner Discovery. Now, none of this is concrete yet. I'm telling you guys what we are hearing of the most reputable of validity thus far. We're going to see what ends up being concrete and what falls to the wayside. But I think people are starting to hear a number, a billion dollars, and they're going, wow, Tony's sitting there with a cigar in his mouth, right? (laughs) He's got a fucking margarita in hand. Um, not so fast. This would probably say why Tony and Warner Discovery will not, we're not too happy to leak any details as of yet. If this ends up to be true, Warner Discovery is not going to want to act like they're too happy about it because they just conned Tony Khan. I mean, to give up anywhere near a billion, but get everything in return. That shows a little bit of desperation by Tony Khan. That shows BC, who's a numbers guy. I follow this type of shit. That shows that not many people were willing to even bid for AEW programming. I really hope. It's too young for Tony Khan's AEW. It's too young in their in their formation, right? I, I know you say, well, BC, it's almost been five years. That's still really young to give up the whole farm for a price tag get that could be in the realm of a billion dollars. Guys, Tony Khan will end up losing in the long run. He will end up losing in the long run. And, and, and you can't really compare to WWE, I, I understand, but because they have so many billion dollar deals. But to give you guys, and I know they have decades to be in the business longer than AEW, so it's not even fair to compare. But just to give you guys a glimpse, WWE gets over a billion dollars just for SmackDown, guys. That's not a streaming, that's not their pay-per-views, that's not Raw, that's not everything else, anything to do with E, A&E television, because they're also getting money for those shows now on the A&E network, Um, biography and all that, they're working with the WWE. No, one show, guys, SmackDown. Gets over a billion dollars. Monday Night Raw gets over, well over half a billion dollars. And they get nearly a hundred thousand dollars a show for production cost. So you're looking at three quarters of a billion dollars for Raw as well. You add in all the other shows, whether it's E Channel, AE, and everything else that they do. You could look at that as $2 billion up front for programming. Then you go into the pay-per-views, which NBC Universal, Peacock, have gotten the rights to. Throw in another bill. Now you guys are starting to see how you conduct business, man. You cannot give away the farm so early on. And you say, well, BC, what if they were the only ones even bidding and this was the only way they were going to do the deal? then that sucks and your hands are fucking tied (laughs) and you have to go to Papa Con and you have to have a long conversation. What can we do? Because if this ends up being true and it's anywhere near a billion dollars for anywhere near four to five years, which is the entire existence of AEW and you only got paid a billion dollars for everything going forward, you just got conned. And Warner Discovery just made out like bandits. I hope that's not the case, man. So, But I know how the community, man, they're going to hear a billion dollars and they're going to start fucking going, wow, Tony just cashed in. Where's the haters now? I don't think they understand how business works. That's not good. 
That is not good at all. No matter what they do, if this company somehow gets super hot next year, two years, three years, they reap none of the profit on their programming, on their pay-per-views, nothing. I hope that this is not the case. I'm going to find out more details, but that's the latest that we are hearing, guys, on this deal. I'm going to find out which parts are absolute concrete, set in stone, accurate, And which ones are still flippy floppy and I'm hoping that they don't come to fruition for Tony Khan's sake. I really want to see the best for AEW. And this deal is not best for AEW. And if it's their only bid, if it was the only offer given to them, wow, then I feel really bad. And I guess I shouldn't be too shocked because the ratings fell all the way back to the 700,000s in the last two weeks. Yeah, I know I know the playoffs are dinging them up, but the product not being good didn't help. The product was actually good last night. It was actually a decent show, even good for a lot of that. Um, and, and that showed up in the numbers. That's what I have for you on the Tony Khan being conned. It's a possibility. I'm going to find out the final numbers and find out what Discovery gets for, for this, Warner Discovery. Um, because it's a strong possibility that Tony Khan just sold the farm. And it's way too early for that. To go back to the numbers, AEW, we are hearing that Dynamite, and I'm going to get confirmation on this. This this was before I went live, and it was posted just 16 seconds before the red light went on. Um, AEW pulled 877,000 viewers, guys. 877,000 thousand viewers now to put that in perspective i don't think i can get confirmation yet but that looks like an accurate number i'm gonna get that double sourced for you guys i oh i got it here that is accurate i can double source that Eight seventy-seven thousand guys that is accurate 877,000 back to a 0.32 18 to 49 demo. Um, to put that in perspective, guys, it, it was just over 876. It's an overnight. That'll be adjusted a little bit. It was just over 876. Last week, they pulled 776. So that is a full, to, to the T, guys, a full 100,000 viewers more. That's the good news. Even with NBA, see what I mean? For people that just say, oh, NBA playoffs. No, if you're putting out a better product, you will have people, even if they're just tuning in during commercial breaks, that's going to help the rating. That's going to help your what's known as quarterlies. And that's what we've been seeing recently with Raw and Dynamite. People have not been tuning in during the commercials, destroying the quarterlies and putting them at a 776 last week. Last night, you had returns. No matter how bare minimum they were, how lackluster, like a, like a Thunder Rosa, you know, just walk into an office, or Miro doing the same thing, but it's fucking Miro. He's finally off the milk cart, and we finally have seen Miro, like it's a, a Bigfoot sighting. Uh, a cage match with a turn, like what Don Callis did. You had a little bit of everything, and it was a complete show. Whether you thoroughly enjoyed it from top to bottom or just bits and pieces, it was a complete show to some degree. And when you have that, you're going to make people tune in. Even if they're stuck on the playoffs during commercial, they'll tune in. They'll see what's up. It'll help your quarterlies. This is what I try to tell you guys. Playoffs were on last night. The Knicks, my Knicks were on the line, man. We were about to be eliminated from the playoffs. Golden State and and the Lakers right afterwards. Come on, man. The same doubleheader. Just like you had last week, but you had 100,000 more viewers, man. This wasn't an elimination game. This is what I mean. When the product is good, you're going to see that. You're going to see that in the numbers. If you think the product was good, but the numbers tanked, they sucked, guess what, guys? You like the show, but the show was not good. Last night was much better. We all were saying that today. And look what the numbers said. They showed it was better. That's the good news. 776,000 last week for Dynamite. This week, 876. Just over 876. They're, they're putting it at 877. Um, n- now, the bad news is that you're just right back to your new normal, which is around 850. 
right? 828 we've seen, we've seen 878, and now you're back at 876, 877. That's the new normal. That's not good because your normal for months was 950, the top of their niche audience, 950. 850 to 950 is their niche. 850 the low end of the top tier, 950 obviously the top. They're still, they're right back to where they've been. Let me show you guys, right? Just so you know how accurate I am, guys. Um, so I told you that this week is 876, just over 877. Last week was 776. Now the week before, April 26th, Dynamite was at 863. I told you around that 850, right? Their new normal, 863 two weeks ago. Three weeks ago, 830,000, right around that 850 that I've been telling you guys about. A week before, try to get a date for you guys, April 19th, uh, 866. Right around the 850. So that's what I... It, it, a week before, March 29th, 833. So every single week, they're hovering 850. And then last week, it just took a, took a turn for the worse, and it went into the 700s. And that's what I was telling you guys, man. This is not good if you're consistently no longer near the 950. Now you're at 850. Sooner rather than later, you're going to be fucking around with 750. And that's what they did last week. 776. They were right around. I mean, you cannot afford to have 750 be your new normal. You have to start coming out with really good shows or at least good shows from top to bottom. And last night, for the most part, was. And that's when you saw an uptick back to around 850. Now, they're going to have to do that consistently. They're going to have to bring it with no mulligans going forward to try to scratch and claw back to 950. I'm not even talking about a million right now, guys. You got to get your footing back. You got to dig yourself out of that hole. You got to somehow scratch and claw back to 950. And if they can do that, man, then we're out of the hole and business is back. But uh, this number, it's good because you got 100,000 viewers back from last week, man. You can study. The heart attack has been, uh, <laughs> you're, you're on the, you had the, uh, what do they call it? The defibrillator, you know, and, and the, the, you got the fucking like in the hospital. It's fucking, it's even again. Your, uh, your heart rhythm is, is even again. Uh, what do they call that? Es something, man. I, I forgot what they call it. But the, the heart attack has been, it, it's been rectified. You, you're 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 back. You got a heartbeat again. You're good. Because when you saw seven seventy six last week, I'm sure Tony Khan and AEW diehards, especially man, the tribalists, you were probably like, you gotta be fucking. Good. What do we have to do? <laughs> playoffs. I swear it's because of the playoffs. No, just put out a good show, man. Playoffs were on last night. Double Decker, Los Angeles, New York Knicks, elimination games. And you gained 100,000. It's what I always tell you. Put out a good product, you're going to reap the benefits. So that's the news on that. I went over NXT um, earlier in the potty. If you want, if you guys want the Monday Night Raw, SmackDown, and NXT ratings for this week and my feelings on it, my amplified thoughts on all three of those brands and what they did numbers wise, that's in the podcast that I put up just a few hours ago. Now I want to switch gears over to Becky Lynch, a little bit of a response, not literally to live in Raquel, but it's along the same lines. I mentioned in the podcast earlier, and I'm not. I'm, I'm going to tease that, man. I'm going to make you go to that podcast and listen for yourself. But two celebrity rappers that Liv Morgan wants to have a tag team match with, her and Raquel versus these two ladies. And BC was like, you have got to be kidding me. Where do we draw the line? Well, Becky Lynch says we have already drawn the line with celebrities, period. Going against what Liv Morgan is saying, and again, I have that full story in the podcast earlier, this is what Becky Lynch says. I want to see the people that love this, that work for this, that are there working year round, making the towns, wrestling four days a week and not being home to see their family, not being able to take vacations because this is a 52 week a year gig and I want them to get more and I want them to wrestle on WrestleMania. That's what I want. I don't care about these celebrities. You don't sacrifice like we do for this business. She says, you just come in for the spotlight and good for you. And thank you for bringing some extra eyeballs 
to the product. But that's not what this business is built on. That's not what this business is built on, she says twice. I mean, that is a straight from the heart, straight from the hip, straight shooting, full throttle, amplified to the core response to celebrities in WWE. Now listen, Logan Paul has more than pulled his weight. He takes this shit seriously. He respects this thing. And that's why we are... We have come to respect what he does, and he's really good. Bad Bunny respects this shit, an actual fan that respects this. And he takes it so seriously that when he's in the ring, a segment, a match, anything, he knocks it out of the park because he makes sure that we get what we deserve. He knows, as a fan himself, what's expected. So Logan Paul, Bad Bunny, listen, we let them off the hook because they're so good. But what Liv Morgan is claiming, who she wants to face in WWE, and again, I have that story, I have those two names, two rappers, it's in the earlier podcast, check it out. Becky Lynch is right, where do we draw the line? I asked that question earlier, where do we draw the line? Becky Lynch is saying right now, right now, enough. There's so many talents in that roster that are not getting the time of day, not being booked properly, being treated like shit. And then everybody comes in and just grabs main events. Bad Bunny was in the double main event. I understand. It was Puerto Rico. It's Bad Bunny. And it more than deserved it, by the way. Once that thing was done, we we know. Some people were saying it should have went on last. But I think what they're saying is it's starting to happen too often, right? Logan Paul and Roman Reigns at Crown Jewel. Bad Bunny comes in, takes it. I mean, what's next? I mean, if it wasn't WrestleMania last year, was Johnny Knoxville going to be the main event with Sami Zayn? In the gimmick match with the giant fucking mouse trap and all the fucking Home Alone traps, I don't, uh, I don't blame them. You know, there's time and places for it, but it should only be a, a small part of the show. Lately, what we're seeing is these celebs are starting to become the whole show, and the wrestlers, the superstars, are starting to become the supporting cast. That's very awkward. And I don't know if that's going to sustain itself long term, man, before the roster gets irate. They're already pissed off about the crowd noise. Now you want to piss them off with more celebrities? Remains to be seen, man. Um, Real quick, uh, it's being reported. I have to do my due diligence and find out the validity of this, but it's being reported. CM Punk is pitching a match with Samoa Joe upon his return. Now, Joe, last I checked, is ROH. Punk is going to be a part of this collision show. That's probably why you're seeing Thunder Rosa and Miro going to Tony's office. They're probably going to be part of collision. And it makes sense because they seem like people that would easily work with Punk. Miro doesn't care where he's at. He just wants to play video games. He probably is pissed off. He even has to come back to work. (laughs) Thunder Rosa, even though she walked into Tony Khan's office, we don't expect her to actually be wrestling anytime soon. Back is still fucked up. This is just planting some seeds. Thunder Rosa, I always said, was like the female version of Punk backstage. Just not really liked by many people. Uh, And and ends up playing the, the victim just like Phil Brooks does. So I expect these names to be over with Phil Brooks. I I just, and it doesn't surprise me that Brooks wants to work with Joe. In case you guys are wondering, Samoa Joe is one of the few actual friends that Punk has in AEW. One of the people that he knows for sure likes him somewhat. So it's not a shock to BC that he wants to work with one of his friends when he comes back. I don't know how he's going to do that unless Joe is, is drafted to collision. Because that's what we're doing. If we're going to split the rosters for real, you're basically having another WWE draft bullshit. (laughs) Samoa Joe drafted from ROH to Collision to work with his good buddy, Phil Brooks. My name is BC Amplified. This has been the Amped Up Podcast for, uh, what are we, Thursday, May 11th, 2023. The second podcast of the day, man. This one, I believe, went roughly an hour, give give or take a few minutes as well. We already put up over an hour earlier, so make sure you guys check the first podcast out. We covered so much on that as well. Man, ain't nobody do it like we do it, man. Ain't nobody do it like we do it. The Amplified Unit, you guys make this thing go round, man. Uh, I'm just uh, thankful that you guys, uh, of all the people you could choose from, you guys choose BC Amplified. Um, Man, I just think that's phenomenal. 
And because of that, there's going to be a lot more content. Tomorrow, you damn well know it. SmackDown review over the next 24 hours-ish to 36, unless I do it the next morning. You damn best believe you're going to get the SmackDown review. Is there going to be content this week? You best believe it. We stay in Amplified, man. We rock in the month of May, just like we did April. Top guy, I'm out. Think, be, live, amped always. Until next time. And there will be a next time. BC saying check you.